Good morning, boys and girls. Um, going to read behind the bedroom wall. Going to start at page 85, chapter 8. Try to get it through as much as I can. <clears throat> if, if I need to, I'll probably read some more. So there might be a part two to this. Um, but we'll keep going from where we left off. Hope you all are doing well um, and staying healthy and had a great weekend. Um, the weather was great. So uh, we spent a lot of time outdoors. So here we go. The cold air whipped against Karina's damp cheeks as she ran home. No one had ever hit her before. She was stunned by what had happened, and she didn't want to think about it. She especially didn't want to talk about it when she got home, so she slowed her pace as she neared her house and carefully wiped the tears from her cheeks. She didn't want her mother asking any questions. When she got home, she found a note from her mother saying she was visiting with Fro Renicky her mother's best friend. Glad no one was home, <clears throat> Karina took off her coat and clumped up the stairs to her room, leaving her bag by the wardrobe as she always did. She lay down on her bed and stared at the ceiling. Life was terrible, plain and simple, she thought. Her parents were traitors and she hadn't done anything to remedy the situation. So she was a traitor. Two, and now she had been slapped by her Fung model, fung model leader slapped hard. <clears throat> she lifted a hand to her tender cheek as tears welled in her eyes again. She didn't understand why she had been attacked. What had she done wrong? So she had said, Hail Hitler, a little out of unison. So what? Karina's twi Karina twisted over onto her stomach on her narrow bed and buried her face in her pillow as tears began to flow in earnest. The Fung model was hers, and it was where she belonged. Yet now she was suddenly punished in front of everyone, in front of all her friends and the other leaders, for something that seemed so in inconsequential, so trivial. Was she supposed to be exactly like everyone else, move and speak at the same time, dress exactly alike, think and feel identically? That's impossible, she thought, trying to hold back a sob that tightened her throat finally it erupted into the stillness of the room. Not only was this impossible, she didn't even want to be exactly like everyone else. Another sob escaped, then another, and another, until each one sounded like an echo of the one before. All the fears and anger Karina had been holding inside the last few days gave vent through her tears. Nothing was fair, nothing was right, nothing. Neither her parents nor her fung ma, the two things she counted on the most, or the way they were supposed to be. Finally, her sobs quieted to join the stillness of the house. <clears throat> Karina held her breath to listen to the silence. And that's when she heard the soft meow of her kitten. She lifted her hot, tear-stained face from the pillow just in time to see the kitten come scrambling up onto the bed. Karina gathered the little bundle in her arms. Hello, little one, she crooned, sitting up and rubbing her snuffy nose against the silken fur. Suddenly, a thought struck her. She didn't know why she had thought she was alone, when the whole time there had been two people not four meters away from her bed. She glanced suspiciously at the wardrobe, but it looked firmly in place against the wall. Where had her kitten come from, she wondered, staring at the wardrobe. Someone had let the kitten out of the hidden room, she guessed, because she was almost sure the kitten had been out before, or it would have greeted her sooner. She was embarrassed to think of the Jews listening to her crying. They had no right to eavesdrop on her, she thought angrily. But just as quickly, her anger dissipated. For heaven's sake, she thought, exasperated with herself. What were the Krugmans supposed to do? Knock on the wall and tell her she couldn't that they could hear every sob, that she was disturbing them? A sudden giggle tried to escape, but it got lodged in her throat, swallowed back just in time. Hiding Jews in a back room was no laughing matter. Obviously, one of them let the kitten out of the hiding room for a reason, and she had a strong suspicion the reason was to make her feel better. And it had worked, she realized with a slight smile. Karina stroked the head of her purring kitten while still staring absently at the wardrobe. She didn't exactly like the idea of the Jews being considerate, 
After all, it was contrary to everything she had ever learned about this constable enemy. Just then, she heard the front door open. Her mother was home. Laying aside the kitten, she hurried into the bathroom to wash cold water over her heated face, trying to erase all trace of her tears. Karina, her mother called. Karina went downstairs and greeted her mother in, front of the, in the front hall with a hug. Her mother stepped back from her daughter and frowned slightly. Are you all right? I'm fine. Why? Bro Rain shrugged. Your face looks red and you hugged me so hard. I thought you'd crush me. Karina grinned. I'm just happy to see you. What are you making for supper? She asked, following her mother into the kitchen. What do you think? Bro Rain said dryly. Bread and cheese? Bread and jam? Oh, and maybe a bit of butter here and there? Karina laughed. Well, it's not too exciting, but you always manage to make everything taste good, Mother. Her mother smiled. You must have had a good day at school today. She tied an apron around her waist. Did you have fun at your frog model meeting after school? She asked, glancing at her daughter. Yes, Karina replied casually, avoiding her mother's eyes. We learned a new song for Fiera's visit. Oh, was all her mother said in response. She changed the subject. Here, peel these potatoes for tomorrow. Karina took the pile from her mother and sat down to peel off the dirty skins. Potatoes and more potatoes. Sometimes they got meat. Sometimes they got sugar. Sometimes they got butter. Times were hard, but they'd get better thanks to Adolf Hitler. Wouldn't they? Abruptly, Karina pushed the doubt out of her mind. Just because of a little slap, she shouldn't be losing her face in the fear and in the fatherland. Life would get better once enemies, such as the Krugmans, were subdued. So that was chapter eight. Um, I'll try to read some more probably later today. Uh, I'll try to do chapter nine. I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you enjoy the book, and I'll get some more uh, reading to you as soon as we can. Have a good day. Get your work done. If you have any questions, reach out to Miss Diaz or myself and we'll get back to you. Have a good day. Take care.